Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, here with John Tran. It's OU week. Ah, most wonderful time of the year. Oh man. <laughs> very, very excited to go through our full prep today, guys. You know, top 10 matchup. Really excited to see who can take control of the Big 12. But before we get into that, we have a very special announcement. We have our first sponsor. Some of you may be looking at this like, why do they have Bottles and Ranch here on the table? Well, we're now sponsored and, and, and having our first partnership with Boss's Ranch. Uh, Boss was kind enough to have us with two bottles here. So he has a regular ranch as well as a spicy ranch. And uh, the spicy ranch is appropriate name, appropriately named Red River Ranch. Mm -hmm. And the cool story behind that, John, is Boss developing this ranch, and, and especially the one that had, that one has a little bit of kick to it, and I love it. Yeah. Um, at, at getting ready for an OU game and tailgating, actually developed that, that flavor of ranch hmm. and uh, deployed it at his different pizza locations. And HEB uh, came in and said, hey, can we bottle this? You know, this is really good product. It's, you know, one of those things where it's like a, you know, kind of an underground cult following. They've gotten uh, following on Instagram. So a lot of cool things going on. And we're excited to be partnering up with them. Huge Texas Longhorn fan. So when you're looking to, you know, have a partnership with somebody like that, no one better to partner with than a fellow Texas Someone Longhorn fan. Someone who loves Longhorn. So when you're shopping this weekend for your tailgate or for watching it, go pick, pick yourself something up at H-E-B. H-E-B. While you're there. Oh, well, before we get okay. to Horns, cool. it is only proprietary to H-E-B cool. right now. It's not, you know, it, it, that's, that, that's who they're in business with. But uh, we do want to continue to promote. But I'll let you get yeah, into yeah, your but, next promotion. But, uh, but yeah, when, when you're at H-E-B picking up this, uh, pick up your copy of uh, the 25th edition of Horns Illustrated. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to it. Uh, we got a little link down low where all the social media is, and you also get a percentage off through the Fanatic Perspective promotion as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Make sure you guys are following us on all social media platforms. We have a lot of stuff popping off on Twitter right now. Uh, some of you guys saw I got into it a little bit with Shannon Sharp <laughs> yesterday during the Cowboys game. So we got some other fun stuff going on. <laughs> we are active on other social media platforms, so... Just a quick reminder. Did, did he mention you on the show there, today? He may have indirectly, indirectly mentioned <laughs> what we were talking about undisputed today. Yeah. But, you know, that was another shameless plug. But excited to have Boss's Ranch on board, guys. So go and check them out and please provide your feedback. And if you've had the ranch before, let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, West Virginia, any other takeaways we want to talk about before we get to Oklahoma? Uh, yeah, the, the only real takeaway is, um, of course, everyone's going to be focused on the cornerbacks and the secondary play from last week for this week. But, you know, the, the one thing I want is the right side of our line. I just don't think that they're prepared, honestly, and that, that's why I gave them maybe like a C plus, B minus as a, as a grade because I, I think the left side of our line played phenomenal mm -hmm. that in our center as well. Um, I expect them to be focused for this game. I do. I, I expect them to come out with the same energy of domination like they did for for the LSU game. That's what I'm. That's the takeaway I'm taking from from West Virginia. My takeaway, uh, just real quick, upon rewatching the game, I was really, you know, we talked a lot about the corner play, but just really encouraged mm -hmm. with the aggressiveness that they played with attacking the football in the air. Uh, you know, Deshaun Jameson being having the number one player on Sports Center and getting some of those accolades in, in terms of, you know, the plays that they made as a group. Uh, B.J. Foster bouncing back. Uh, and I know we talked about that a little bit in the live chat, but those are good positive signs moving forward um, throughout the Big 12. So schedule. that B.J. Foster play, I think, is overlooked because of that fantastic uh, interception by Deshaun. But what he did was a very athletic play. Mm -hmm. He broke on the ball, popped it up in the air, and caught it on the ground. I mean, I thought that was it's difficult to do. Yes, it's very difficult mm -hmm. to do. So you, you're right. You know, them attacking the ball, it, it, it seemed like this was the the best that they played all year. And uh, you know, it's the best. It's the right time for them to start playing well. You know? Absolutely. And going into the opponent they're facing this week, we're going up against arguably, you know, some most people or some people, depending on, you know, I said most, but yeah. Jalen Hurts, Heisman can't, contender. 
you know, serious candidate. We I mean, know he was what, your number one, too. He was my number one the last time we polled, and we will poll again after this game. I think that would be a good time to go through the fanatic perspective, Heisman power rankings. But in regards to Jalen Hurts, he's been phenomenal this year. Almost 500 yards on the ground. I think over, you know, 1,400 yards passing, 14 touchdowns, so only two picks. He's one of the most proficient passers in the country. He's averaging 14, I think, almost 15 yards per attempt, which is insane. A tenth. Per that's, attempt. That's the uh, keyword, um, attempt. So going against a guy like that, you know, and, and the, the corners are going to have to just play better considering what they're going to have to deal with uh, this week. But I wanted to start with Jalen Hurts as we begin our prep because of the Iron Bowl comments, right? So he was asked or at the last press conference going into this game, you know, hey, the, how big is this game in terms of Texas OU and all that? And he's like, well, I've played in the Iron Bowl before, you know. And I think a lot of people took that in a negative light, and we've heard a lot of folks making comments on that. What did you take away from the Iron Bowl comments? Yeah, a lot of people were saying that that was a smug comment. And, you know, from actually watching this kid, I mean, we've watched him for, what, five years now, four years? Mm -hmm. uh, he seems like he's just a, a kid with it, his head on, right? You know, him taking the backseat, that big story about him. Uh, I don't think it was smug at all. I think he was truthful. You know, the, the Iron Bowl is a, is a very big rivalry game. I mean, it's the SEC's version of it. I mean, yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, Go ahead and throw in the Florida Georgia game. Uh, but, yeah, I think Florida but, Georgia is more of the version of. But to your as point, of, yeah. as of recent history, that one has decided more championships than Florida sure. Georgia. Sure, absolutely. And he and he's played in a couple. He's played in quite a few of those. So I mean, him him saying that, I don't think that that's way too off base, honestly. You know, we got to we got to take off our Big Twelve blinders a little bit for that. And yes, yes, Texas OU is a big rivalry, but you know, it's not the only one in all of college sports. Well, Tom Herman alluded to that in today's uh, press conference. We're filming as of Monday, whether, mm -hmm. whether you see this video today or Tuesday. Okay. But uh, Tom Herman mentioned in the presser today, I said Tom Herman mentioned in the presser. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was like, I was a big part of Michigan, Ohio State. You know, yeah. and, and he brought up some other big rivalry games that are huge around college football. But he also said, hey, you could definitely make the argument for Texas OU being one of the biggest rivalry games, if not the biggest one. Uh, in the country because of the uniqueness of the Cotton Bowl and what that signifies. And, and I'm excited to go uh, to the game this weekend because it will be my first Cotton Bowl version. I did go to the Big 12 championship game last year at Texas OU, so I got a, a dose of it. But I think with it being the historical aspect with the State mm -hmm. Fair, the camaraderie, the Cotton Bowl, and the Golden Hat and all that, and, and the, the historical aspect of it it's it's very very unique yeah. so i appreciated tom herman's comments about that but he also kind of piggybacked on what jalen hurts said because he's like we've been at other schools too right and and you know jalen hurts has played in playoff games yeah <laughs> you know like yeah. he's played national championship games so he if, if you're banking as a texas fan on jalen hurts being rattled because this is his first texas ou game um, you're in for a rude awakening. I'll just say, I'll just leave it at that. So, going into this game, though, you know, we want to be optimistic here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start from a Texas perspective. Okay. What are some things that you just see off the top, you know, that Texas can take advantage of when it comes to OU and trying to secure victory? Well, let's start with uh, op uh, offensive line or offensive line. Absolutely. I think we've we've had that test against a I'd say pro, I think I'd feel very comfortable saying a very very good LSU defensive front. Mm -hmm. And would you say that they're better than uh, OU's defensive front? Yes. Just on paper, just just yes. from the eyeball test. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Tyler I, Shelton, uh, uh, Rashad Lawrence. I mean, come on. I mean, those guys are going to be Rashad Lawrence is going to be a first round pick. Yep. And. Uh, I thought we handled ourselves very well. I thought our offensive line played probably the best as as a unit than uh, than all the other units that we have in or in the LSU game. So I think they're going to. be I don't prepared. agree with that, but they played well. Yeah, I mean, uh, considering the opponent, considering yeah. the opponent, and you know, I mean, I, I guess you could throw in the uh, wide receiving core as as, as sure. a team that played well. But aside from that, I think that they're because they, we had a I wouldn't say a top performance last week. I think we're going to be way more focused this week. 
Um, I also think from a defensive, because you have to look at the matchup too. And to, to piggyback on what you're saying about our offensive line, I could also make the argument that West Virginia's defensive line with the Stills brothers could be better than what we get from Gallimore and, and everybody else on OU. And no disrespect to, to Neville Gallimore and, and some of the other guys that are down there. They are playing better football throughout this season. Mm -hmm. But it's going to lead me into my next point. They haven't been tested. Okay. OU hasn't. I mean, let's just be let's be honest. And the Sooner fans that follow this channel, you know, be objective, please. You guys haven't played anybody yet. So when we're talking about from a talent perspective and a physicality perspective, you know, this is a matchup where it does favor Texas from a standpoint of just who we've been able to match up with and play well against. I mean, the Stills brothers last week were very, very good. And they're going to be very, very good players throughout this Big 12 uh, season. So a lot of people are going to say, oh, that's overhyped. Uh, we haven't been tested. But, I mean, honestly, it's it's not. I mean, until until you've been put placed in a situation where you have to fight back and like, and someone hits you in the face and you have to take that, you know, it's, it's a completely different situation. Um, does OU have the talent to overcome that? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's that. But – Will they? That's the that's the issue that that they're gonna. You got to remember these are four, uh, four new starting line offensive linemen for them. Like oh, oh our, so you yeah. so transition transition yeah. to their offensive line sure. versus I think one of our strengths is our defensive line. And um, you know go then, yeah, we're holding people yeah. to three and a half yards of carry exactly. right now in the run game. So if we can get any type of pressure just from our front four, three or four, well, what, front, d yeah, yeah three, depending yeah. on what uh, what fronts we're running. Yeah, you know, it could be a long day for them. I mean, it could be, but you know, it, it's it's just like they're breaking in a, a new line. And I think you were the one who threw out a stat is that they haven't found a starting line. Yeah, they've been moving. Like they've been moving guys around every week. Now they do have uh, Creed Humphrey, who's definitely one of the best interior linemen in the mm -hmm. country. That's going to be a hell of a matchup to watch with him and Keandre Keandre Coburn, right? But when we're talking about their guards, and 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 I know. Some of these brothers on the OU offensive line are highly regarded uh, guys that have been kind of waiting in the wings behind the NFL guys, and, and we use kind of that same argument with when it came to our defense, right? Oh, yeah. And so I've heard a lot of OU fans tell me, hey, well, you know, these folks over here have been waiting and they're getting their opportunity, and they've played, you know, even though they've been moving people around, they've played good football, albeit, you know, against not the greatest opponents, they've looked good, right? They've blocked everything up. I think they've only allowed uh, four sacks on Jalen Hurts so far this year. So pass pro has been sharp. In the run game, they're averaging an insane amount of yards per carry. All three of their running backs are over seven yards a carry right now, which mm. is stupid, yeah. right? So they, they're, they're at least coming into the game playing confident in terms of their execution. But I think Keandre Coburn's going to be a rude awakening for them. I think uh, Taquan Graham, Malcolm Roach, we saw Tavondre Sweat play a hell of a game against West Virginia, and he made some great plays in the second half. So they haven't gone against guys like that. You're forgetting um, from about the physical speed standpoint. that we blitz with. Uh, with Absolutely, that's a great point. You know, BJ Foster coming coming at different angles. So I mean, and having to pick it up. Yep. I think I think it's more so of the communication, having to pick certain things up, certain things that Todd Orlando will present that they haven't seen before as a unit, right? So that's going to be one of the keys to how we defend Jalen Hurts because we led with Jalen Hurts before. If it turns into Jalen Hurts is, gets afforded the time that he's had throughout this season to stand back there, pick apart teams with, with his legs and his arm, then it's going you to be a very, very long day for us. One of the things we did successfully, specifically in the first game against OU last year, against Kyler Murray, was we dictated uh, moving the pocket on him, right? And collapsing things quickly and making him either get the ball out or if he scrambled, he scrambled to a certain side of the field where we had help. Now, certain times, he would beat the help because he's Kyler he's Murray, that good. right? He's, he's that, that good. good. But at least the plan was to, you know, they had a real plan for containment and we were able to use our speed across the field and make them play more laterally, right? Um, wasn't as successful in the rematch, but we still held them. I mean, both games we held them somewhat below what they their normal offensive output and taking certain things away. I want to see if Jalen Hurts 
can make some of those plays that Kyler Murray was forced to make last year, that Baker Mayfield was forced to make in 2017? Does he have that type of ability? Because he has not been pushed. He, he, even him himself, in terms of those pressure situations, they haven't faced very many third down situations. They haven't been where the game's tied in the third quarter or the fourth quarter and they got to go on a drive and respond. So we, we're going to have an opportunity to see them against a Todd Orlando defense where his whole philosophy is based on stopping the run and creating pressure. Um, I also, I mean, there's, there's several things uh, to address here. So in terms of, you know, we're still talking Texas and what are our advantages? Last year, we had a very successful game plan with Sam Ellinger in this mm -hmm. offense where we, especially the first game where we had quarterback run available to us when he was healthy, we really took advantage of time of possession, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But uh, one of the things we've noticed about OU is the increased aggressiveness, and we'll talk about Alex Grinch as well, but they're heavily penalized. Mm -hmm. They bite on a lot of things. They're, you know, they're going to hit you after the whistle. They're going to do some things. They're, they're trying to crank up because they're trying to change their culture. The intensity of their defense. Absolutely. Because they were terrible last year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, any thoughts you have? I know you wanted to talk about Kenneth Murray. I think Kenneth Murray is probably, one, if not the best linebacker uh, in the Big 12. He's definitely one of the best. Um, he's, he's just so athletic, and he just seems to be around the ball always. And he's physical. He's a physical specimen. You know, I'm, I'm, I came away very impressed with him. And, you know, he's also that linebacker that gets in your face <laughs> afterwards. Absolutely. So, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how he's going to play with our athletes in space. I want to see if he's as fast as he's looked on film. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he's pretty quick, but we, we do have athletes to match against their athletes. Um, with that said, you know, I want to see how improved their secondary is versus our, our I think that's something Texas definitely could take advantage of. I think so? Especially if Mr. Nine is back there, you know. For sure. That, that helps out us drastically. Well, before we even get to Nine, who, who is OU putting out there that's going to stay with Devin DuVernay in the slot, right? Um, OU struggled a little bit with their safety play. They've struggled over the years where they're, they're trying to, you know, whether whatever position Buki's playing over there or whatever other guy they want to trot out there to try to, to keep up with Devin DuVernay. I'm very curious what their game plan is. Uh, little Jordan Humphrey ate all day long mm -hmm. last year in the same position, and now you have a faster guy coming at you from that slot position, and now we have other guys with Faster speed. Faster guy with better hands, too. Yeah, and, and speed on the, and talking about speed on the other side with a Brennan Eagles, who's made some really big plays against good opponents this year so far. So I think that's something where Sam Ellinger is going to be able to make some money on, on Saturday in terms of moving the football down the field. And then in conjunction with the offensive line, we actually have a better offensive line than we did last year. Mm -hmm. And we were physical and, and, and got a lot done against OU last year. So we're coming in. Yes, they have an improved defense, but we have an improved offense. Yeah. You know, we now have Sam Ellinger 3.0, I should say, right? So uh, I think that's a favorable matchup in itself for Texas um, going into this game. Other thing I wanted you to, to get your thoughts on, um, the field goal kicking situation for Oklahoma is, is a curious one for me because – um, Caleb, uh, I think it was Caleb Stevenson, uh, their original field goal kicker went down for, excuse me if I got his last name incorrect, but he got in trouble for um, dealing with a girl or his girlfriend, you know, he's not kicking anymore. And then Burkage is now the one kicking. But between the two of them, because they both really shared kicking duties with the, the games, they haven't had a field goal attempt, I believe, over 35 yards. Well, maybe their offense is that good. I, their offense is that, <laughs> that good. I mean, but it's a question going yeah. into a football game like this. With this pressure. With this pressure. Yeah. The game last year did come down to a field goal in our favor with Cameron Dicker, but they had that the security blanket of Austin Cyber in the, the past however many mm -hmm. years. You know, So just looking at what can happen you know, from a kicking perspective, it's a curiosity for me. I mean, it, could, um, it could determine the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially absolutely. a close game. Uh, the other thing, I, the, the last thing I just wanted to, to point out is you have to try to make Jalen Hurts beat you from the pocket if you're Texas. Yes, not with his legs. 100% agree with that. 
hundred percent. Yeah, because um, if he's if he's gonna put up a hundred yards rushing, we're gonna have a we're gonna have another long day. Like, Absolutely. So when we look at uh, OU, there's a lot they can take advantage of um, on their end, uh, and I'll start off with this. And this might be the biggest question mark slash mismatch in this entire game. And I'm just again being objective. Texas secondary is going to have their hands full with mm-hmm. OU's no, that's, wide receiver that's group, not... pass catching group. I mean, it just is what it is, guys. Yeah. And OU's group, in my opinion, is is deep and talented as LSU. Now LSU's group is is doing some historical things right now, but from a talent perspective, and the different levels of personnel that they present, whether it's CD Lamb, whether it's Grant Calcaterra, who hasn't blown up yet like he did last mm-hmm. year. I think that's more of a, you know, he was working with Kyler Murray, hasn't gotten all the way there with Jalen, and they've also been blowing people out, so balls haven't been, you know, going around as, as evenly distributed. But the brother Rambo, who's fast as hell, um, and he's the guy that is, is kind of replacing that Hollywood Brown speed dynamic. You know, you have a Jordan Hazelwood. You have all these guys. That, Don't forget the running backs coming out of that. Yes. And they catch the ball, too. Yes, they got three backs. Uh, you know, Ramondre Stevenson, Kennedy Brooks, Trey Sermon. Yeah. So, it's a lot to deal with. I think Stevens is averaging over, like, like, 11 yards per carry right now, which is, you know, again, stupid type stuff. Yeah. How do you deal with all these guys? What, you know, I think it's. I think if you're Todd Orlando, you, you have be, to keep everyone in front of you. You, you have to keep everyone in front of you, but you also have to tell your guys, I'd be doing a disservice to you as a coach if I just actually stand back there mm-hmm. and cover. Yeah, we have to generate pressure, 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 pressure. That's what this game can gonna... make at least one error. Yeah, where it's a turnover. Yeah, that, I mean, we we uh, we caused Kyler to make one error, and I think that was the. The difference in the game because I think we scored off of that possession that that Brandon uh, Brandon Jones and we got some play. momentum too yeah. when we got up 45-21 that first time so and and you know we covered well at times last year and there were times where you obviously saw C D Lamb do what he did right so all these guys it's possession a concern receiver. C D Lamb yeah possession receiver he's averaging <laughs> like twenty five yards a catch right now just stupid Rambo's also averaging well over twenty yards a catch so. Across the board, yeah. that's, you know, I can already see the, the, the welts under Tom Herman and, and Todd Orlando's eyes staying up at night trying to figure out how to defend that. Rewind. Yeah, Rewind. Like, won't play over and, and, over and then you're talking about I'm going in here with no Jalen Green, no Caden Stearns, and it's just like, you know, and I get brothers got interceptions last week and, and what they did against West Virginia, but this is a completely different this, beast. This is a different animal. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um and, you know, we already talked about the injuries. I'm also concerned about, you know, we talked about, hey, Keys, we got to contain Jalen Hurts' run, but that's easier said than done. And we already faced another runner in Spencer Sanders, and I know they have a little bit, you know, Spencer Sanders is not nearly as uh, experienced as Jalen Hurts, but he's very, very dynamic. Yes. And Jalen Hurts is dynamic, and we had problems with containing Spencer Sanders in our game, you know, we had we had an easier time stopping Chuba yeah. than we did. Uh, they're, Spencer they're, they're different type of runners too. So uh, Spencer Sanders is way faster, I think. Um, Jalen is just a, a he's a tank. So and once he builds up that momentum, you you have to gang tackle him. Jalen's also broken off some big runs this year. No, no, I, no. I, yeah, hundred percent. He he reminds me he's a, he's a little bit faster than than Sam, but he's a tank. He he will be yeah. hard to bring down. He will break tackles. Yes. Yeah, it's, and that's 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 a big difference too uh, uh, between him and Kyler. Last year, when we you able, when when things condensed around Kyler, he's going to go down and protect himself mm-hmm. because of his size. He, he more was understanding angles and like if he had an angle, then he would use the speed and outrun you. Jalen Hurts is going to say, "Hey, if it's fourth and five or, or third and five or whatever, I'm trying to get this. I'm first. trying to get that first yeah. down. Like I'm not giving myself up." Um, and 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 that's another thing we haven't touched on either. That's exciting to watch in this game. Sam Ellinger versus Jalen Hurts, and the similarities that they have, uh, will to win, leaders, both have sometimes questionable deep passing, you know, but they're just flat out the leadership Mm -hmm. capabilities on both sides. I I wouldn't even say there's an edge in this game. I really wouldn't, uh, Uh, because you look at what Sam Ellinger's contributed from a leadership standpoint, 
to rebound Texas and get them to where they are. And then when you look at Jalen Hurts and what he learned at Alabama, how the man speaks, you can tell he's he's impressive. He's heavily impressive influenced by Nick Saban. Yeah. Um, and then the coachability aspect of how much better he's gotten throughout his college career when we first saw him come into the game in relief of uh, Blake Barnett against USC. I've watched uh, almost every college football game he's played. So uh, very, very interesting dynamic and look. Uh, I think OU does have an advantage or potential advantage with Alex Grinch coming into this game. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of familiarity amongst these coaches. Tom Herman, Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley versus Todd Orlando. They've both interacted so much within the last few years. The new wrinkle being brought into this is Alex Grinch from Ohio State. And he comes in and he's like, we want to hit people in the face. They do switch their front from three to four man front. More, you know, one gapping and stuff like that. I think that's something that's a little wrinkle in here that we have to pay attention to in terms of things that can't be overlooked that can't be overlooked because the one thing I will and I'll I'll also say this the one thing that's hurt us um, in this rivalry recently in terms of Sam and and not not, well before I even get there one one of my examples is from the Big 12 championship game and the other example is from LSU as well as we've done from a pass blocking perspective we've actually had issues with picking up certain types of stunts and you know, delayed blitzes mm-hmm. or corner blitzes. Everybody knows the one that happened in the safe for the safety in the Big 12 championship game, where it came out of nowhere and Ruffin McNeil d- dialed that one up. Then, you know, the game that Chase on runs at the end of the first half against LSU. Okay. You know, very right. very impressive, right? Yeah. So, those are some things that we've now. When people are rushing straight up, we block it up fine, even with the extra blitzer. But I'm just saying certain ex- more exotic things. We've had issues with. I'm curious to see what Alex Grinch comes with um, in this game. Um, other things they can take advantage of, man. I mean, speaking to the aggressiveness, they have ten players on their teams that have gotten a sack this year so far. Ten players. Ten player. Ten different hmm. guys uh, that have gotten a sack, but they don't generate a whole lot of turnovers. This goes, I guess, into his his aggressive nature. Yes. Oh. Yes. What did you see? I know you watched the Kansas game pretty closely. Is there anything else you saw that, you know, concerns you one way or another? So the one thing that I saw from the Kansas game is that if you can control the clock, you could you could play with this team. I don't think can well, I know Kansas doesn't have the ability to do that right now. They don't have the personnel. Another thing is they don't get down on each other because they went down 14-7 and they just all right. You know, we're going to run back and do what good teams do, and that's score right on this next possession. And then I think they ended up winning 40-something to 21 or something like that. But uh, but this this team, it, they're not going to get rattled. And uh, like you said, the leadership with with uh, Jalen Hurts, he's not going to be scared by the big by the big stage no. or anything like that. No. And, you know, we got to beat this team. We got to schematically beat this team, and we got to, we got to I think, outman this team too. I think it is – I think that first game, you know, we look at, and even parts of this, the Big 12 championship last year, there were times where we just fell out, out the more physical team. Um, and we have to continue to set the tone in that manner. Um, I, so I, t- I completely uh, agree with you. So the next thing I want to talk about are some things that are up for grabs, right? Okay. What are the kind of the unknowns where it could either sway towards Texas' side or sway towards OU's side? First one being the coaching. I think we already touched on the familiarity between the two coaches. Right. Right. You have two young, you know, guys that are in a Lincoln Riley and a Tom Herman who have been, you know, kind of dueling back and forth with each other since Tom Herman and Todd Orlando were at Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you see in terms of this coaching matchup and, and how that plays out in this football game on Saturday? So – Going back to the, the the only unknown variable is the defensive coordinator, the new defensive coordinator. Um, with that said, I think that Todd Orlando, the past couple times that we've played them, has had a pretty good scheme against against I that agree. offense. Um, as good as you could. As have good as you it. could. I mean, it's better than most. <laughs> at, at one point, I mean, what, what was it? Four minutes left. They only had twenty-one points against us. 
with Kyler Murray, and that was historically the best offense. Well, with the, like the fourth quarter, but yeah, yeah. With, yeah. within the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And you know, if if we don't let up on that, I mean, we it, it could have been a runaway, and we let up on it. And I mean, credit to Oklahoma. I mean, they they kept they kept churning and chiseling, but um, I, I just think that. I honestly think that Tom Herman has something up his sleeve for this game. I think he's kind of thrown out a couple of trip, tr- trick plays back to back and back to back games, just going to say, "Hey, we got something else," you know. And I, I not not saying that Lincoln Riley's not going to have it, but you know, I'm just I, I think Tom Herman, like you said, constantly is an opportunist. Yes. And I think I think he understands it, and you know, you know, his record against the spread and being. What is it, 11 point, 10 and a half? 10 right and a half right now. Mm-hmm. Currently, it's that, I think that's the variable right there. I think Tom Herman really, really, really wants this game, and I think he's going to do whatever he can to win this game. Pull out all the stops for this Pull game. out all the stops. I mean, and you, you hear it all the time, and, and, and I'm sure Lincoln Riley wants to win just as bad as Tom Herman does. I think they both understand and that the winner of this game is, is going to be one of the teams in the Big 12 championships. Yeah, Texas. So that, that's a that's actually a good point that I didn't even uh, have coming into the video. But if Texas loses, they're out of the playoffs. Yeah, they're a hundred percent out of the they're, playoffs. They're, they're out, yeah. right? So from a, now they're not out of the Big Twelve championship no, no, no. race. Um, but I, I do think Texas. I don't know what they're how they could make a case for being a playoff team, losing LSU and Oklahoma in the regular season. If Oklahoma loses, that you know they would have to run the table and defeat Texas again to, to maybe have a shot at it, right? Because their strength of schedule will be an issue down the road. So they need to win this game, right? Um, so from a, from a standpoint of both staffs and, 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 and motivating their players, not that anybody needs an extra motivation for the Red River rivalry, but you know, considering what's at stake here uh, from a playoff standpoint, I think that's something definitely to note. So I'm glad you brought that up. The other thing you brought up that I think is interesting is you talked about Kansas kind of controlling the football and and and, and time possession. Um, Last year, in in the first time we played, we actually, uh, in the 48-45 to win, we won T.O.P. I believe it was like 33 or 34 minutes to 26, which was a good margin for us, and, 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 and you could see it play out in the course of the game. Kyler Murray having a stretch because he's on the sideline so much. And it's the old thing people used to do with Peyton Manning back in the day, right? Best keep defense away. for him is keep away, keep away. right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and with how proficient our offense is, particularly in the red zone, I'm sure, sure some of y'all saw the stats about how good we are in the red zone during the West Virginia game. Those things all bode well for Texas. Now in the Big 12 championship game, the T.O.P. was a little bit more even, actually skewed towards Oklahoma's. Uh, side right and so Oklahoma changed some things up schematically didn't get into a whole run and shoot as much and they were more efficient in the Big 12 championship so I'm curious um, how that plays out I think that's something that could go really either you know it's not something where I, I like LSU where I knew we were going to win T.O.P. or Georgia where I, I figured we win T.O.P. I think that's something to really keep an eye on yeah and once we're going on those drives we have to score I mean that was the, that was a big Can't difference stall. in in, uh, in the Big Twelve is that we punted I think three or four times, mm-hmm. and uh, if we're if we're going on those long drives we have to score. I said that when we were stalling uh, in the West Virginia game this week when me and you were just sitting watching mm-hmm. it. I'm like, we we keep talking about the defense and their struggles. We have to outscore these dudes. Mm-hmm. We have Sam Ellinger. We have this offense. We have Devin Duvernay. We got to have to out, like you're, at some point you're gonna have to say. We're going to put 47 points on the board meet me there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's the recipe to beat Oklahoma from a, you know, getting into a shootout mentality. But what I am saying is offense is going to have to be held accountable to, to not only put points on the board, but control the football, and they cannot Extend stall. Extend drives. Mm-hmm. Extend drives. Yep. All the, you know, they can't get cute like they did last week. Click my bill, keep, my man Bill keeps saying getting cute on third and two. Run your, run your freaking quarterback power like you're supposed to. Like, oh. And, hey, hey, we have not run that. I think we've run it, I think they said under ten times this year or something like that. 
I think. Oh, in right. terms of when we called that play? Yeah, actually I, called it. I, I don't even know the stats and, on that. That might be, yeah. And that was our most successful play against Oklahoma last year. So I, I'm expecting to run it at least th- two or three times. In short yardage yes, opportunities. Short yeah. yardage. And that's in conjunction with what yeah. we already have in our runners, mm-hmm. whether it's Roshan, whether it's Keontae. Um, you know, I know Jordan Winnington, unfortunately, you know, that was the next unknown was the injury chart, right? Yeah. Um, you know, Tom Herman also saying today that Jordan Winnington is doubtful. They got their hopes up a little bit, which is okay. Uh, he will be back soon, but just not this Saturday. But there is a big weapon that we could have coming back, and that's the person we have behind us in Colin Johnson. Yeah, uh, I think we touched on this a couple weeks ago that I don't think anyone could honestly guard our wide receivers, wide receiving core when he's on the field because it's kind of pick your poison. And we chose this photo especially for, for the background because, I mean, he's had his best games against Oklahoma, arguably his best games. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. he, he had, a, he had a, what, a 200-yard one against USC a couple of years back. Yeah, but this but, game was the Big 12 yeah. title, title he, game. He had, he had a buck 77. Yeah, 180 roughly. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the, the two games that he played in last year, it was a 130-yard average game. And you throw in, you sprinkle in Devin Duvernay and Brennan Eagles, and then some some Jake Smith. It this team's this team's almost impossible to guard in in passing situations. So we've yeah. given a lot of credit to OU's group. Our group is right there, mm-hmm. right when he's healthy, when he's right. Yeah, uh, we did see them sputter a little bit at times in terms of in West Virginia game. in the West Virginia game when they got a little too reliant on Devin Duvernay and teams start doubling up. I expect Alex Grinch to make some sort of adjustment in terms of trying to contain Devin Duvernay, which all that means is more one-on-one opportunities outside for a Colin Johnson. Excuse me, one more one, uh, more one-on-one opportunities or for Devin. Brennan Eagles, yeah. right? And, and and others to step up. Even in even in the um, screen game, I think can be another place where we utilize a Roshan or a Keontae as well. So and, tons of weapon, weapons. I'm glad you brought up well. the screen game because Hey, I, I'm a fan of uh, Epps. However, he does not he does not block the same way that uh, Colin blocks. That's true. So we he do fin- get an upgrade. In he the finishes game. he finishes blocks, and if we do a little extension of the run, as you like to call it, through mm-hmm. a little swing pass to Devin, you know those three yard uh, passing plays turn into eight yard p- passing plays because he's actually putting his pushing his man back about four or five yards. I agree. I agree. A little bit fix more physical. Um, so, I mean, just the ins and outs of the game, guys. And I'm excited to see how it plays out. I am too. We're going to do a live chat later this week um, to, to, you know, talk with you guys. OU fans, welcome. OU <laughs> fans are welcome. Um, just, you know, as long as y'all, you know, don't bring no dumbass energy yeah. on the channel. But, um, you know, we're here to have good objective banter. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have a live chat later this mm-hmm. week. I'll announce the date uh you know, sometime, you know, either whether it's Thursday, somewhere around that, that ballpark uh, for us to talk more. Um, and I promise we'll get the audio and, and stuff, you know, that we have problems with that will be cleaned up. Uh, but overall, I'm excited for this game. Let's get into our predictions, man. You can go for it if you want. I, uh, I'm going to pick OU 37-31. Um, I think... As of right now, they're the better football team from a standpoint of health, um, from a standpoint of the things we're going to have to deal with, all, uh, with on, on the defensive side of the ball specifically for, for Texas. Um, but I think it's going to be a very, very cont- highly contested close football game. Um, I don't think, you know, I believe the score – the over the over under was like 70, seventy three and a 70 half seventy something seventy something. Yeah, I don't for I think because of the familiarity, I don't think the score is gonna. I don't think this is gonna be like the fifties and, and stuff like that. Now it could be with all the people on the field, but I think this is something to where there's gonna be a play here or there that we turn around and look at and say, "Damn, like that turned it." That turned it. Um, now I hope I'm dead ass wrong. Uh, and last year, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be the whole nice guy here. I picked Texas to win this game last year for, you know, I'm just, 
objective football Steve had on. And before, on. The, um, before the season, actually, you picked OU to win this game and us winning the Big 12 championship. I do, and I still see it that way because Big 12 championship game, <clears throat> theoretically, I should have Jalen Green and Caden Stearns back. So I think, I, I, I think these teams are very close. And like I said last year, I'm glad you brought that up. Last year I said, these two teams, no one's going to beat each other twice. And that's how it played out. And I believe the same thing this year. So I actually agree with you that I think they're the better team right now. Um, I also, before the season, picked them to win this game, uh, Texas to win this game. And since it's my son's uh, fourth birthday this, this uh, weekend, Texas by four. I don't care what the score is. <laughs> <laughs> Texas by four. Texas by yeah. four. As long as we pull it out. Yeah. Well, guys, um, we appreciate y'all very much. Um, and, and remember, like I said, make sure you're hitting up the links in the description. We'll have everything here. Uh, thank you again. Hey, to so, so I know, I'm excited to see your reaction to your first game. Because my first time going to the Cotton Bowl was last year. And it was just a, it, it was a great experience. Not, not, I mean, not just the fact that we won the game, but the fact that, you know, I, just being around everyone and seeing it, you'll, you'll be able to see what I kind of saw, uh, the Big 12 championship game where everyone was just laser focused and a nervous focus and no one talking to anyone to everyone talking shit to each other. Gotcha. <laughs> that, yeah, you're yeah, see there that. was like yeah. no trash talking going yeah. on during mm -hmm. the Big 12. Like it was mm -hmm. the most nervous yes. energy I've ever seen, honestly, at a football game I've ever been to. So I, 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 do, I do feel like yeah. more lax kind of going into it in terms of that trash talk. But uh, rooting like hell for my team. Yep. I know I didn't pick them in this game. You're but wrong. the way my picks have gone <laughs> this year, you know, I, I, I feel good about that too, right? So overall, guys, um, again, thank you to Bosses Ranch and, and uh, partner up with us. Uh, and make sure you guys uh, subscribe. I haven't asked for subscri subscriptions in a while. I know we mm -hmm. hit 5,000, but yeah. it is important to subscribe to the channel, make sure we're growing this platform. Um, one of the things I love about Bosses is like, you know, they talked about their tailgating experience and that was a big thing. And that's other videos we wanna start to get into and making that's a part of the fan experience. This video is for fans, by fans, mm -hmm. right? And so what we do off the field, what we do to get ready for games, and those, that's other content that I think you guys would be interested in seeing. But in order to get there, we need to grow our platform, grow our following, and um, you know, get, make some money so we can support this channel, right? So, uh, but we appreciate you guys in sticking with us. Horns always up. Welcome. Okay.